Hello, Stuart. Thank you for volunteering from the audience. Uh, this is the first trick I actually ever learned uh, when I was a kid, uh, and it's called the piano trick. And given that you volunteered to come from the audience, if you just place your piano on the table, ah, you've got to bring it with you. Tell you what, if you just put your hands like that as if you're playing the piano, that'll probably do. Right. So I'm going to take these cards. That's two cards a pair, two cards a pair, two cards a pair, two cards, that's another pair, two cards a pair, two cards a pair, two cards a pair, and one single card that I'll put there. We don't need those anymore. So, I have two cards, and that's a pair. 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 So what I have here is we have two piles, both with the same number of cards in it, an even number of cards. And I'm going to take this single card, and you can tell me which pile you want me to put it on. Uh, the furthest one. The furthest away one, OK. So I'm going to put it over there. And I'm now going to demonstrate something to you called the invisible palm. So magicians are able to hide cards in the palm of their hands. Uh, and I've been able to perfect uh, doing it invisibly. So if you watch very carefully, I just pick up that single card there into the, the invisible palm <laughs> position. He looks sceptical. And I'll move it over to this pile here. And there it is. So your single card, instead of being there, is now over here. But obviously you want proof because you look like that kind of a person. Over here, your single card was before, but two cards appear, two cards appear, two cards appear, and two cards appear. And over here, two cards appear, two cards appear, two cards appear, and one single card moved by the power of the invisible pan. Thank you very much, Stuart. Thank you. Well, this is a brilliantly easy trick to do, and it's actually extremely magical. So I have the cards here that I use. They are, in fact, just normal playing cards. If I'd have done the trick without using the flim flam and patter, and patter is the magician's term for the kinds of things that I say to confuse people, it would have looked like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. Seven cards plus one card, eight cards. That's all there is to the trick. It's a very simple piece of arithmetic, but it's hidden in a confusing presentation. So what I do is I produce a pattern in the spectator's mind. So I keep talking about two cards a pair, two cards a pair, two cards a pair. And as I put the cards in between their fingers, what happens is that they begin to get a pattern in their brain that's thinking two cards a pair, two cards a pair. I never count the cards, I only talk about them in pairs. When I then take the cards out and split them into two piles, again, two cards a pair, two cards a pair, two cards a pair. I then finish that part of it by saying two important things. The first one is true, the second one is false. True is, there are two piles here, both with the same number of cards in them, and that's true. But I follow that up by saying an even number of cards. That's actually false, because there are seven cards in each pile. Therefore, when you add the extra card onto one of the piles of seven, it doesn't matter which pile they choose, obviously, seven plus one is eight. And then, instead of counting out eight cards, or seven cards, again, I do it by talking about two cards a pair, two cards a pair, two cards a pair and one single card. So what I've done is had some extremely simple mathematics, simple arithmetic, in a confusing, deliberate presentation to hide the simpleness of the mathematics. And in developing uh, computer software, for example, it's important that we get the algorithms, the mathematical parts of it right, but also that we make sure that the software isn't something that's going to confuse the people who are using it. And in particular, in applications like uh, uh, medical software, what you want to do is to have people knowing exactly what they're doing at the right time. So actually understanding how magicians confuse people by making them make these mistakes, these kind of brain mistakes, uh, for example, believing that the, that the card has moved from one pile to the other, is actually very important because we can use the ideas from magic to actually build safer kinds of software, which I think is a fairly neat idea. Mathematicalmagic.com is the place to go for more resources, teaching materials, and more information. I hope you enjoy. It.